Welcome back again to Castle Motors, the automation version 4.1 campaign game where we make big boxy trucks. Or maybe not today. I've got not a lot of suggestions to sit on this time, but I'm going on vacation soon. I want to get an episode out before I go. So I think that while our Calamegdan, our new van, is in engineering, I'm going to start a parallel project that's going to be a little different than what we've done so far before. First, before I do that, I want to address, as usual, pre-orders. The Barbican, we set this guy to 100% price on pre-orders, we have to pay the full price of the car ahead of time, and it's kept our pre-orders from ballooning out of control. I'm happy with that. Our factory is still very, very busy. That's our large factory. And it's completely saturated. Uh, so that car is selling great. The throne has got way out of control for pre-orders. So I'm going to try a feature in 4.1 that's new that I haven't actually used very much. I'm going to add a factory to the throne's production here without uh, stopping. Or w without uh, stopping production of that facelift. So I'm going to add to the Throne Mark IV a new factory. Man, Mark IV, that tells me it's about time to uh, replace that guy. Now, the throne is made of aluminum, and aluminum presses don't unlock until the 1990s. So this is still a very hand-built car. I mean, it's probably a smaller factory. I'll look at the uh, numbers on here as I go. Let's see, 80% efficiency aroundabouts. I can easily afford to max out the tooling quality. I can afford to tack a QA testing on here. Basically everything in a small factory is pretty cheap for me at this stage in the game. We're sitting on a billion dollars of actually legitimate money this time. So this is a pretty high tooling factory. That's going to cost us... 50 million to set up. Not bad at all. So bring in 100 million a month in just profits. Uh, if I make it a medium, size 1, we can see it drops about 6% in efficiency. We do get a lot more cars. Our cost per car is around $2,000 with the medium, and with small 3, that's still more. So, even though the efficiency is dropping, spending another $50 million and going to a medium-sized one factory is probably quite reasonable here. It's just a larger factory. There's no steel presses, which is half the cost of a normal car factory. So we can uh, afford this as a little add-on easily, I think. And at some point here, we may have to do the same to the uh, engines, because those might be in short supply once the Kalanigdan comes out. And I've just ticked it off, and we can see it'll be ready in two years. We're also due very soon to start production of our factory for the Kalanig Dam. That'll be a huge expense for us. So hopefully I'm not going overboard here. But I think before we get way into that on the Kalanig Dam, I want to make a parallel project. And I don't want to use our mill engine. That is updating during the engineering of the Kalanig Dam. I'll actually have to remember to update the Barbican and Throne to match so they can use the new version of the engine. But uh, let's take a look here. Maybe it's time to make a muscle car. That's a good choice for our big engine we've developed in secret. And maybe it's time to make... This is the market that's always evaded me. Utility Premium and Utility Sport. That's probably the only market in the game where I've never really made a car that appealed to it well in campaign mode. So I may have to experiment with that, or I'll put it off for a little bit. First, I definitely want to see a cool muscle car. Of course, we're Castle Motors, so we're not going to make anything too sleek looking. That's just against our MO. We have access to body styles going up to 1989 because of our research department. Because we're a little ahead of the time on styling. But I'm still going to scroll down. And I'm thinking... 
I might consider making our muscle car a pickup truck. So this version's an option. This looks the part, I think. It's big and kind of squarish. What else do we have? Oh, this is perfect. It's got a very long bed, which isn't exactly what we want, but it's sleek. It looks like, a, you know, your muscly El Camino kind of thing. Yeah, this is where I picture a Castle Motors muscle car looking like. Hopefully the muscle car buyers agree with me. All steel, ladder frame, make it cheap. I'm going to see if I can get away with a solid rear axle. Anything sporty in automation hates solid axles. Uh, I think they're even worse in automation than in real life, but we're going to give it a try. Now, in secret, we developed our 5.5 liter engine. And we'll have to give it a name when we're done with this, but uh, it's time to bring that into production, I think. So, the updated version... Target regular gas here. We are knocking. Doesn't need to be perfect fuel efficiency. I can put a lot more fuel into the engine. And give it some camshaft. 200 and some horsepower. Because of the size, uh, because of the stroke especially of the pistons, we can't rev very high. So it's a little at odds even with its four valve overhead cam valve design. It's just hard to get it up there. In fact, I may have to make forged. Yeah, that'll do internal parts. Then we can rev it okay. You can see we're, we're still cutting off our maximum power just because of the red line. Since our engine's so big, it doesn't like to, to rev fast. But I'm going to do what I can to get it running. Yeah, if I open up the exhaust plenty, we've got over 300 horsepower at the peak here. Maybe that's uh, what customers are going to want. You can even get a 9.5 to 1 compression. It's a very modern engine by our standards. So, of course, you wouldn't have seen all of these body variants in the uh, other screen because I had it filtered down to only pickups. But uh, let's see what we can do here. Rear wheel drive, four speed automatic, with a limited slip diff? I think we can do a limited slip diff. Maybe we'll do the viscous LSD. That's the, the much cheaper way to do it. And most car market actually does appreciate some things being kept on a budget. Crank some top speed in there. We'll come back to this for sure. We always put hard compound tires on here. That's not ideal for the market, but I'll see... I'll start off with hard compound and see what we need later. We are going to need some wider tires, I'm sure, though. Can I control all that power? Disc brakes, for sure. Low cooling airflow? Get some top speed in there. And a premium interior with the good power steering and no analog brakes because there's still a huge engineering thing for us. Looks like the sporty suspension preset is close to what Muscle wants, but it's not perfect. Low practicality penalty. We haven't got enough seats in it, I guess, because of the uh, configuration here. I like some rear seats. But they don't want a third, they don't want a front bench seat. Unfortunately, we just aren't allowed to be that American in automation. Can't do it. Not enough people to buy your car anyway. So give me a minute, I'm going to play around and see what works on this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, here's something we haven't uh, worked with in this campaign much. We're always making very practical cars. You can see there's a point when the tire diameter changes, 
and our profile drops past a hidden number. It still says 50 tire profile down here, but it is changing. And uh, our material costs go up greatly. You can see there's like a $700 difference here for low profile tires. And exactly what constitutes low profile depends a lot on the year that you're designing the car in. You want to watch out for that on most markets because it'll just drastically affect the price of your car. In the 80s, you'd only get really low profile tires on like a supercar. That's not appropriate for a muscle car. I gotta keep them fat. Zero to 60 in under eight seconds with the right combination of top speed and gear spacing. That's not bad for the time at all. We actually eliminated wheel spin with this LSD. We can we can even afford to go without the LSD because it's cheaper. Cheap muscle car is I think something I want to aim for in this build. Going with the ladder frame and stuff is already very inexpensive oriented. Yeah, I can see there's a real trade-off between they'd like to have more power for revving the engine higher but they don't like the loss in reliability. And since I might use the same engine variant on like a sport utility premium kind of car, I'm gonna just leave it lower revving and less powerful. Unfortunately. But there's a lot of power to be gained by going dual exhausts here. Now, if I were making a car just for performance, what I would probably want to do is we can compare the stats if I press the hold button here. Drop the stroke by, like, a lot. Which drops a total displacement. And then make up for that with more revs that I can now afford because I've dropped the stroke. And I'm using the whole power band here. But uh, muscle has a specific desire for engine displacement. In fact, it's the single most important part of the car for them. It's just the badge on the side of the car that says you have a, in this case, five and a half liter engine. They basically buy on that alone, which I think is a maybe a little harsh. I think it's a very European assessment of, of muscle car buyers, but it does, it does work to make you make that kind of engine. Use what they want, right? Is it, if you're you can make it, you make like a 10 liter engine, and then it's too powerful. It has lots of downsides. You know, it causes wheel spin. It's expensive drivetrain parts to handle all the power. Uh, it goes so fast the tires are expensive. But uh, then you tune it. You choke the exhaust. You do everything you can to make it slower and less powerful while being large. So there we are at 354 horsepower. I think that's a decent engine too. But we gotta give this thing a listen too. Only one muffler on this guy. And then the big decisions. So far my strategy with Castle Motors has generally been to keep the cars very inexpensive in terms of engineering time. And this design very much goes that way. But if I just press the whole car buttons we can compare. We can see if I were to put good suspension in the back, they, they'd like it far more at the cost of 7 months engineering time. Putting double wishbone instead of a solid axle just drastically affects Basically all the stats are important, but especially comfort. If I were going to go to a unibody build, that's even more of a drastic change at the cost of about a year and some change of engineering. I really love it. But I think I'm going to stick with tradition, stick with the technology I'm familiar with in my company, because that's the Castle Motors way. You will put a little positive quality on the model here. And that's going to help us. It'll make it lighter, more comfortable, more durable. Simple technology, but very well made. That's what we'll do. So there we are, a 350 horsepower muscle truck. I think this is a nice color. 
I have a sky blue. Feels appropriate for a muscle car. Uh, now, I might just double check. Am I anywhere close to hitting the market for utility premium? I am not. They say it has poor off-road behavior. And uh, what else do they, they want to know about it? It's about as comfortable as a... Well, it's more comfortable than average utility premium. Easier to drive. About as safe. It just doesn't have the actual utility score or off-road. Now, if I can think of a way to sneak those in, we'll have a good secondary market. Then we'll have a, a muscle car that goes off-road, which I think is just right on brand for us. Oh, and looking here, I didn't cover the changes I made. You can see what I really had to do to control this car was get it staggered tires. These tires in the front are quite a bit narrower than the ones in the rear, and that makes it tend towards understeer and feel easy to control instead of tending to spin around. Now I'm just going to try and see if I can sneak a little extra appeal to utility premium in here. We give it the manual locking diff, which... Uh, it's a very slight penalty to Muscle's competitiveness, because they don't care to pay for it, but that's fine. Utility Premium would like more brakes, uh, harder brake pads specifically, but uh, Muscle directly would not like that. I'm also running Sports Tire Compound, which is probably a real penalty to our off-road. If I just go to Medium, well, you can see it flips the handling of the car around. I need to go to the narrow on the front wheels. Again, that's not too horrible a compromise to the uh, muscle market. And it even made it a little cheaper. What else can I do? Can I get an off-road skid tray on this thing? Eh, again, one more thing that muscle doesn't care to pay for. We're kind of getting there in Utility Premium, but I'm not sure it's worth it yet. I might have to roll back all these changes. Maybe I'll have to look at my detail stats screen here. Why is my Utility score so poor? Uh, power Distribution. Not Rear Wheel Drive. I believe that's what Power Distribution means. It all goes to the rear wheels. Uh, that wouldn't be that bad. Uh, extra Cooling is terrible. What if I give it uh, a big radiator? That will affect the car's top speed, because it hurts the aerodynamics a lot. But, giving it maximum radiator, again, at a small penalty to muscle, that's brought us up to 100 in utility premiums. This thing will actually start selling to them. So you can see we're getting there on the compromises. We're, we're getting, you know, some results. If I go one inch larger on the wheels, I can fit a little bigger brakes. Which, uh, again, one more thing Muscle doesn't care to pay for. But people seem to pay any price for a car's version 4.1, so who cares? There's a direct trade off. Muscle would like soft, comfortable brake pads, and Utility Premium wants hard brake pads for handling extra weight. The bed honestly looks very large. Oh, what the hell is this morph? Yeah, that's a shape I want for, for my truck. I think the fact that the bed walls are shallow, this is a mod body, so that's the thing, kind of has a negative effect on the total utility it has. It considers it to be a small space in the bed that calculates the volume. There's nothing to drag the bed out longer, although it's already a very long bed. I can make the cabin a little bigger. It'll help the comfort. That's gained us very small benefits, but it's something. Ha! Ah. Now here's an interesting thing. Muscle cars, right? Traditionally, always very all-wheel or rear-wheel drive. Really, I think most people wouldn't consider it to be a muscle car if it's not rear-wheel drive. But, if I choose all-wheel drive, muscle loves it, utility premium loves it. On the other hand, suddenly we've gone from like 80 months or 70 of engineering time, I don't think I even saw what happened, 
Now we're up in 103.6. That's horrible. That's a lot for us. We'll have to cut corners in order to get this car engineered in a reasonable time frame. Which I don't love. Uh, especially utility premium. Muscle doesn't care if our car is unreliable, but utility premium does. And it's a big part of our brand identity, our reputation up in this corner, that every car we sell tends to be very reliable. I think I'm going to hold on to this car and take a minute to figure out where all that extra engineering came from. Because I'm not sure what I added. Adaptive dampers. No way wants to pay for those. And it costs engineering. Engine bay fill. That's not the cause of our extra engineering. I didn't leave it on. Nope. Nothing weird going on up here. Uh-huh. Yep. Cooling airflow. Go figure. Just taking this slider from 0 to 100 adds 10 months of engineering time to get the air flowing through that engine. If I bring it down just even a little bit, more than half of that is, is removed. So most of the engineering time is at the very top of the slider. That's one easy way I can save some ET. Alright, all-wheel drive muscle car. And I can afford to make the tires. Well, I can't afford to make them the same with. So there, that's a plan for our all-wheel drive muscle car. It's still a very high engineering time, so I'm going to need to have to cut something out. And that's for a factory. Uh, what do we have? What do we have? I don't know if I can afford to build a whole new factory right now. Maybe I'll just get a large plot and build a medium factory on it. We can see how well this actually sells. There's only so many buyers. And to get it done in five years, I mostly just have to increase the funding and put a little pressure on the design team. This is a small reliability penalty. I have taken a little tooling off, but it's not so bad. Now I'm curious if the engine can be engineered in the same time. Ah, uh, yeah, I got a lot of redundant factories for our mill engine. I maybe take one of those over for our new engine. It's going to need a forge works added. And this only needs to make 2,500 engines for now. So I can afford to have a little lower tooling on here. Of course, I'm still going to try to use up the... Uh, five years. And there we are, 6,000 engines produced. That means I can make another model that uses them. In five years. At a cost of $2,300 per engine. And the engines will be very reliable. They'll help make up for the low reliability on the car itself. Now, what can Muscle afford to pay for cars? 25,000? Alright. I can price it at 27,000. It'll be for the, you know, better part of Muscle. And it appeals to Muscle Premium, and it appeals to Utility Premium, who has even more money than Muscle. So I think we'll have no trouble selling at that price. In fact, I'm going to take it straight to... 30,000. Yeah. Oh, and 100% pre-order deposit. That's our new company policy. Which is the close I can get to saying no pre-orders. And I'll take out a loan on it. Why the hell not? It's still not a turbocharged version of the engine, but we're getting to something that's actually fast now. It's our first properly fast car. While I'm at it, We'll have a short investigation into what makes a good sport utility. Now, uh, in the comments, people kind of wanted to see the tiny version of some of these SUVs. I might go for this two and a half meter wheelbase car. It's uh, the smallest one's got four doors. Now, I think premium does prefer larger vehicles, but a short wheelbase makes for a good off-road score. 
and can make this also an off-road premium car. So I'm gonna see if this works out. I don't know that it will. So the first recipe I'm gonna start with is uh now I'll put double wishbones in front. Double wishbones in front are premium. Uh, solid axles all around is off. -road. We're going double wishbone in the front, solid axle in the back. Very classic American truck configuration. And uh, yeah, so this thing's too small for the five and a half liter engine. I'm just gonna put the mill in it. I need to go back and name my muscle car. I signed off on it, but uh, I haven't done anything with it yet. So off the bat, we're looking at a car that's scoring pretty well in Utility Sport Premium and regular Utility Sport and Off-Road. And not as well in Off-Road Premium. I guess I want something more expensive with a bigger engine. But this is an interesting car for sure. I do need to tweak the suspension. And I'll figure out what else it takes to get good scores in uh, Utility Sport. For example, do they like solid axles in the front? They don't mind them. And since that's considerably cheaper, that's what I'll do. They seem to like the ladder frame. That, uh, you know, very cheap, very durable. Not good crash safety, but it's considered to be reliable. Now uh, we can see immediately the trade-off in gas mileage as I gear it up. They like a higher gearing for a regular and a lower gearing for premium. I'll leave it there. Big warning about wheel spin. No interest in LSD, they want the manual locker. Ooh. Now here we go. For utility sport, all wheel drive goes from 41 drivability to 58 drivability. It's just easier to use than a range box and lever you have to mess with. Uh, not too many penalties, and it's more expensive, but uh, Utility Sport, they really love the all-wheel drive compared to the 4x4. I guess more of a dedicated off-road vehicle the 4x4. So we're seeing some crazy market scores. This this little car will blow away anything on the market. It's not even finished yet. Yeah, that's 210, 212. I could put wider tires on and reduce the wheel spin. Oh, never mind. I, the all-wheel drive is already taken care of that. I better leave the power distribution at 50-50. If I mess with that, I'm just going to make it worse. It looks like there's enough demand for some different variations of interiors. I might start with a uh, premium and a basic or something. Since Utility Sport likes... Well, they say they like premium more on the balance, but they can't afford it very well. Anyway, premium interior for this for now. I have to spring for the, the good power steering. I can save a lot of money by going to the standard safe instead of advanced. I might do it in this case. You can see it hurts the scores, but uh, cheaper cars are good. And air springs are some cool new tech. That's, uh, I think we get our little familiarity from time we've done Hydro-Dramatic before, Thrones. But Progressive Springs, they're cheaper and they're just fine. Make the car a lot lighter, too. Get better gas mileage out of that. And, uh, somehow, yeah, it's got stuck at below the theoretical minimum of ride height. It was under the line here. It's buggy. Let's change the suspension type. You gotta get this thing up and off the ground. Do some off-roading. In fact, we've got to soften springs by a lot. And just the right balance of sway bar keeps our roll angle just under 8 degrees, which seems to be where they like the comfort the most. We have some enormous scores. It's twice as good as anything in the Utility Sport or Utility Sport Premium markets. And it's three times as good as anything in the off-road markets. I think this is our vehicle to conquer utility sport. What pink car do I want to slap on it? I mean, my SUV's green. I'll probably stick to that. 
Yeah, with lots of plastic. That's how you know we're in the 80s now. I think this car will do just perfect. Man, now I'm all on my own. I've got to come up with two names for cars. I think I'll calibrate the factories to give myself some more time to think about this. Now, the market sizes of utility sport and off-road premium and such, they're not huge. Looks like uh, less than 10,000 people were aware of my company and less than 15,000 total. So I don't want to go absolutely nuts on a factory size. Or, or maybe I do, what the hell. 8,800. Am I gonna bankrupt my company? Mm, most likely. Let's go to medium and we'll upgrade that later. That's a smarter move. I need to cover my engine factories too. And there we are, we have engineering set to a little extra reliability. It will be done in five years, the exact same time that our new muscle car is done. I'm going to sell it for 22000 I think I can do that. That's, that's very expensive for utility sport, but it's within the range of utility sport premium, off-road premium. And it's warning me that our engine factories are going to be overworked which I don't uh, trust entirely, but I, I really am going to need to add some to the engine factories. Now, we're due to have some 20,000 more vehicles in production than we have, and it looks like our mill factory utilization, that's not going to fully allow that right now. If we double it, it'll be only 35,000 or something. So, I'm going to need to reconfigure our bigger factory here. And this is going to cause a gap in production. But, oh well. A lot of millions of dollars to reconfigure that, and we're just going to do it. That'll make up because I'm taking away a factory from its production and adding more cars with the same engine. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully I can afford it. Oh, and the last thing I need to do, before I hit the timeline moving here, I have two models and an engine to name. So let's see, our new engine. I'm going to name it, uh, I'd like to name it something like the Ram, but that's, mm, that's a little too close to a real world vehicle here. So what's, uh... Let me think of a a, a a good name for a ram. Yeah, yeah, how about Grand? And this is just the muscle 1982 variation. Now, I already took up a brilliant name for the engine. I have to name the car here as well. Let's see, how about the... Hey, keeping on our mm, somewhat Ottoman naming scheme here, the Basilic. It's a famously large cannon. I think that's a good namesake for our muscle car. And for our sport utility vehicle. Sipai? Sipahi? Someone tell me how to pronounce that, but that's... Uh, a name for a variety of Turkish cavalry. I didn't uh, participate in such an aggressive swing away from the American theming of castle motors, but, you know, there's just no castles in America. That's the problem. Yeah, you kind of have to steer to other cultures for good names. And I did only make one version of this. If I make a facelift, maybe I'll make versions with a nicer and a less nice interior. We have those multiple markets well. Now, I've just taken out way too many loans, and, uh, you know, we're going to see if that bites from the back. Fortunately, right now as I speak, we're bringing in not so much profit, actually. That that turned around immediately as we began. What's our expenses here? 
car production crew. We're not even building the factory yet. Uh oh. Loan repayments are steep. Those are going to be going on for a while. At our current rate of losing money, we're good for another year, maybe? That's not... Not quite the sign that I like to see. Hey, it looks like our new factory is in place for the throne, and we are finally outproducing the demand. I think. Well, this is wrong. So I've got, you know... Zero? What's going on? Car Factory 5. Something's caused the throne to stop being produced. I'm worried it's using the wrong engine or something. I may have to look at that. Uh, yep, I've made a mistake with the throne. We haven't been producing it since we retooled the factory because I forgot to apply the updated engines. And it's demanding an old version of the engine, which we don't have yet. So I better just facelift it. My plan was to leave it for now. But, uh... Yep, new throne facelift. We're getting that in this this episode. I'm going to try and get through it real quick. Alright, existing engine. 1978 version. Yeah, doesn't like it much. Get the small version. Yeah, it doesn't like it much. Ah, uh, come on game. Don't crash on me now. Okay. It looks like a lot of the markets should be buying this version of the throne, the van here. Say they have affordability issues. On the other hand, it's obviously selling great, so, you know, whatever. Ooh, I'd like to put ABS in something sometime, but uh, I need to get this out in a hurry. The longer I spend engineering, the longer I spend not building it, unfortunately. I'm going to drop the luxury interior in this, just go to premium, same for both versions. The throne really is due for a proper replacement. Honestly, I maybe could have uh, replaced it with the Sapai, or whatever it is. But that wouldn't go into small factories, would it? Oh no. Now that I'm going to make the Throne Mark V, I can't retool the car factory I started making to the Throne Mark V until it's done. Highly problematic. And let's see, let's throw some extra money at this. And uh, yeah, get her done in seven months. Now, how long for that car factory be done? Man, almost a year still. So we're going to have one factor that wants to make the throne Mark V. One wants to make the throne Mark IV, and we are almost broke. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so close. And we're in the negative monies. We are now. Okay, so car factory five. You, you need to change in a hurry. That's going to take three months. Okay. Somehow, even though I'm in negative money, my credit rating has only gotten better. And we've been forced to take out a loan. It'll last us a few months. We're just building too many things. So I say it's not hard to sell cars in 4.1, but if you're not careful, you can still explode into debt by just getting too greedy. And now our cash flow continues to be negative, but it seems like it's turning around. We now have enough money to last us for a few years, and that's with us spending money on factory construction. So once our new cars come out, we should be well in the green. The Barbican, which is now a few years old without any modifications, is continuing to sell pretty great. In fact, it's actually hit the point where the factory utilization is not 100%, so it's, it, sales are slowing down a little bit. And, oh, money is in the green. We are profitable again. Castle Motors has avoided a 1980s bankruptcy crisis. 
we are truly similar to General Motors. I'm just going to watch that cash come in until we hit uh, the release of our new three models all at once. Our minivan, our muscle car, and our SUV. And then it'll be time to wrap up the episode. See, our factory production's a big expense, but it's actually not as big as our huge marketing budget. Uh, we're back above a billion dollars. We have as much money in the bank as we did at the start of this episode, before I went nuts. Pre-orders are going to come in for our three new models. Oh, and the throne is being sold for free. Yeah. Every single time you make a facelift, can't skip through the sales price and margin screen, or you end up selling your car at cost. Okay, new price on the throne, which now has a million years of pre-orders. Fix this, please. Killer Rob. And how are our new models selling? Let's see, all three factories are being worked to the maximum. We have some pre-orders to work off. The Barbican, thanks to our new business model of requiring the full price for a pre-order, is, I think, for the first time in the history of our company, building up some stock on the dealership lots. We have enough to last us a few months if the factory to shut down. Now, ideally, when you do a facelift of your car, that takes at least like three months to retool your factory, longer as the factories get larger and larger. And it could take several months if you're also upgrading the size of the factory. And you want to have enough stock of cars on your dealership lots that you continue to sell while that factory is in retooling. And we are finally starting to see some of that happening. I do suspect that it's maybe not making us quite as much money as it could with the high pre-order costs, but uh, I'm happy just to have the game not be acting broken. Uh, and now, as we go into January of 1988, I'm about ready to stop. We've got CD players about to become available, as well as five-cylinder engines. We also unlocked V10s a little while ago, which is the direction I thought I'd be going in, although these boxers are serving as well. And uh, so the Sipai, I hold on. Sipai. Thank you, Google. Sipai. The uh, Sipai is selling brilliantly. The factory is completely saturated. The Basilic is selling quite well. And the Kalamegdan, our van, which uh, looks like it's going to be doing great, is not doing the greatest. It says it's losing money. Now that's... Um, that just means it's not making enough money to pay back the loan that we took out to build the factory, which is fine, because even if we're losing money paying back the loan, we'll still have the factory when we're done, and that's worth a lot to us. Now, uh, but yeah, I'm surprised to see the factory is working at less than half time, trying to keep the uh, production in stock. It looks like if estimates at the current rate of sales were to stop now, wouldn't sell out for five months. So maybe I will need to price that car down a little bit. That's most likely. To, you know, then it's very high, but not quite as absurd as 100% margin. Honestly, you could say this is the only one that's selling realistically, and the rest are crazy. Uh, because it's not like I've been playing this as a very shrewd businessman. I've just been slapping absurd prices in the hope that people will stop banging down my doors trying to buy these things. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I might have to do a video of driving some of these in the theme. Now we have some more interesting cars to test out. Uh, in the next episode, I think the throne is finally and thoroughly due for a replacement. I don't know with what. Its roles have been pretty well superseded 
by the Sapai and the Calabi Den and the Barbican. Between all of those, uh, it, it doesn't really have its own place anymore. It's selling, but I'd like to replace it with something more modernized. Or something different entirely as well. And as for what that could be, well, let's see. Right now, we're doing a great job of making our utility delivery sales. Sport utility is picking up a little bit. We're still not filling out the market. I think our sales of the supply must be going somewhere else. Especially, say, family utility. We're making a lot of sales of family utility and family. Which is the Kalegmidans area. It even says that the Kalegmidans are best utility sport vehicle for competitiveness. The utility sport premium is all that Sapai has to its own. And off road premium. Now, what are we not selling to? City cars? We could make one, we don't have to. Passenger fleet? That's certainly an area. I think someone mentioned in the comments as well. With a cheaper version of the Sapai, or sorry, the Kalmegdan, or van, we could definitely branch into passenger fleet sales. That'd be a good shuttle and taxi car. If we want, we could just go crazy and build a supercar and find out what our new Grand engine is capable of. And that could definitely go in the small factory where the throne is now. And if we want, we can also replace our uh, existing Barbican, our big seller. So coming up, we'll be going into the 90s, and our research team is ready to start designing cars that look the theme for the 90s as well. So we've got some crazy supercar looking coupes that we can work with. Audi wagons. What's new in the trucks department for the 90s, though? There are some good delivery van options. Uh, make the Oscar Mayer Wiener car. Could make the world's smallest van if we want to. And pickup truck. Got this very nice looking Land Rover -y SUV body. It doesn't have a utility variant, but otherwise, it could be a good replace for the Barbican. And that's what's new for bodies for us. So, as always, I'll be listening to the comments, uh, and I'll be away for the next week. So, the next video is not going to come out quite so fast. But uh, if there's something you want to see me build, let me know, and I'll see if I can sell it. If I don't get any good suggestions, maybe I'll just play around with version 4.1 and see what the worst car I can sell is. We just build everything wrong. But for now, we've got a lot of new, interesting cars coming out. Our van, that's a bit overpriced, our muscle pickup, and our SUV are all selling very well. And the Barbican, while getting old, continues to sell well as well. It's just the throne that's really due for replacement.